All right, all right. We are rolling. What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Fred D. Borgia Show. And we're not going to really call this an episode. We're just going to call this the heart part six, the missteps Drake took. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to this channel. And once again, if you made it this far, hit that subscribe button. So we're going to get right into it. So I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that, you know, Drake didn't wrap his ass off. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that Drake didn't do his thing throughout this whole Kendrick versus Drake situation. Drake did his thing. I'm going to say it like that. Yes, I am team Kendrick, but I'm going to say Drake really did his thing. He rapped very well. Family Matters killed it. Push-ups killed it. The hard part six, debatable. But we're going to get into that because I'm going to go over all the missteps and the lyrics that just didn't really add up. And it was very contradicting. So, And I, I forgot one Taylor made. We all know what happened with that. I thought it was very disrespectful using Tupac as an AI. And, of course, you know, Snoop was on that song. And we already know about that. Um, so, yeah, listen, we're just going to get right into it. So we're just going to go over the missteps of Drake, the heart part six. I thought it was actually very strategic what he did. Um, the heart part six. We all know Kendrick uses that series, the heart. and also, using a sample by Aretha Franklin, Prove It, I thought this was very strategic as well, because if you really think about it, to me, it's more of saying, yo, Kendrick, you're saying I'm this, you're saying I'm that. And using a sample, Prove It, by Aretha Franklin, I can dig it. I think that's very strategic. But we're going to get into this. So we're going to start at the very beginning. Well, not the very, very beginning, but it's damn near the beginning. So this is where he contradicts himself. This is where it's kind of confusing in a way. So he raps, the ones you're getting your stories from are all clowns. A few line, a lines later, he says, we plotted for a week and then we fed you the information. Now, this is where it's weird because you're saying the ones you're getting your stories from are all clowns. And as if you guys didn't know, supposedly there was this mole in OVO camp and this mole was feeding Kendrick false information and of course Drake knew about it and they were feeding Kendrick false information so Kendrick can write about it to make him look dumb so here's my thing about this though so the ones you're getting your stories from are clowns and then a few lines later we plotted for a week and then we fed you the information um it seems like your ghostwriters were just not on the same page. So I'll just say that. And then you go and go and rap a daughter that's 11 years old. I bet he takes it. We thought about giving you a fake name or a destination. Listen. To me, when you dissect these three lines, it's not really even like dissecting. But if you just look at these three lines and read them, you'll realize that if this is so true that Drake really had a mole, don't you think that he would be, I would, I would think he would be smart enough because this is something I would do, but don't you think he would be smart enough to document all this? If there are text messages going back and forth, you know, someone in his OVO camp that's texting, you know, Kendrick giving him this false information, don't you think he would document all this? And you already know how Drake does it on you know, on, 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 on social media, especially Instagram, how he'll post on his story, you know, funny memes and stuff like that. I feel like that this would be genius for Drake to do, to show him the receipts of, you know, this fake mole and you plotting all this information. It will save you so much time instead of making all these diss tracks and making a diss track like this and doing a bunch of missteps. Let's move on. And now this line is very disturbing in a way because when I really think, or you don't even really have to think about it. Just hear it. If I was fucking young girls, I promise I'd have been arrested. I'm way too famous for that shit you just suggested. I don't think he ever heard of R. Kelly before. Bro, just because, like, what? If I was fucking young girls, I promise I'd be, a, I, I've, I'd have been arrested. I'm way too famous for this shit. You just suggested. It's just like, bro, what are you even talking about? So basically, 
you're saying, you know, you haven't been caught yet. Like, just because you're doing what you're doing, that's not how the justice system works. Just because you're doing what you're doing, um, you know, it's R. Kelly, man. <laughs> that's all I got to say. R. Kelly. All right, let's move on. And then he goes a few lines later. He brings up Millie Bobby Brown. This had nothing to do with Millie Bobby Brown. Kendrick never said anything about Millie Bobby Brown. So it's kind of just like you telling on yourself, God damn it. <laughs> um, and we all know how that that is um, because Millie Bobby Brown supposedly, um, well, not supposedly because Millie Bobby Brown said in an interview uh, that her and Drake, they text and she was 14 at the time at the time. And he was, uh, you know, in his 30s. So and supposedly Drake invited her to a show or whatever. And, yeah, they text. You know, the interviewer asked Millie Bobby Brown, hey, like, you know, what do you guys text about? And she basically was saying how he gives me good information about guys and stuff like that. So I don't know. Weird. 14 year old and you're 30 plus texting a 14. It's just like, bro, nah. Um, and then you go and say, I never look twice at no teenager. That's false because you could look on YouTube, just type in 17 year old. Colorado concert with Drake and that'll tell you everything you need to know um if you didn't know <laughs> all these missteps man it's it's so crazy like your ghost riders were definitely not on the same page um all right now he raps about you mentioning a minor but I'm not gonna say the n-word so I will say ninjas you're mentioning A minor, but ninjas got to be sharp. So if you don't know, when Kendrick dro dropped his recent diss track, he has a line on there, you know, A minor. And a lot of you guys might know because it's all over TikTok. It's all over social media. It's one of the biggest songs right now that's streaming. Not to mention that that song is actually number one on Toronto radio. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna post it somewhere over, over, over here, over there, over there. I don't know, but it's number one in Toronto. So that, so that, so that definitely tells you something that your city, your, 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 your neighborhood, your backyard is not voting for you, man. They're just not. They see the bullshit. But um, anyway, yeah. But there's no B sharp note, so that line is kind of trash. All right. Let's move on. So, so there's this one line in here that that you could tell that Drake didn't really study his opponent. I felt as if Kendrick studied his opponent. And it really just goes to show when Drake raps my mom came over today, and I was like, mother I, mother I, mother ah, wait a second. That's the one record where you say you got molested. Oh, fuck me. I just made the whole connection. Now, this is where it's like, yo, Drake, your ghostwriters were definitely not on the same page. And I, I like, I feel like if you're going up and up against an opponent that's that that raps very well, who's a great artist, you would think you would study this opponent of yours so you know what i mean like you should study your this opponent of yours so in that mother eye line um kendrick has a song called uh mother mother eye sober and on that track yes kendrick mentions people in his family was abused and assaulted but he specifically makes it clear that you know that people around so he specifically make makes it clear that he hasn't been touched and people around him they question him like yo were you you know did you get touched or did you get abused or whatever and he makes it clear that yeah he 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 wasn't he, uh he made it clear that he wasn't touched or what wasn't molested so for you to say that's that one track that you got molested or track that you got molested in it's just like bro like you need to study your opponent and that's the big difference. Like, I just felt like Kendrick came a lot more prepared than with Drake. I felt like Drake, you know, 
heard the song that Kendrick dropped and he saw that everybody was saying A minor coming at Drake calling him a you know PDF and stuff like that. And I felt like he probably felt like he needed to drop something. And to be honest, man, he didn't need to. And like I said, I'm not gonna sit here and um and say Drake didn't do his thing because I believe Drake did. But in this situation, man, Drake did not come prepared. I think he really little brothered Kendrick and that was his downfall. And you could tell by this record because there's a lot of missteps in this record. The lyrics just don't add up and they're very contradicting. And then he goes on, you know, to, to say like he's throwing the white flag, you know, he doesn't want to, um, you know, he doesn't want to give pretty much no, no more attention to this. In other words, unless if you come with, you know, the receipts, the facts and stuff like that. And it's just like, okay, well, you're telling Kendrick to come with these facts, but where are your facts? And like I said earlier, if you would have documented all this stuff about this mole that you supposedly have, like, oh, man, you win this, no question about it. And it would actually be kind of pretty damn funny. <laughs> like, this is something that you probably should have done if you do have the receipt. So I don't know, man. But to me, this was definitely the culture versus the industry, the industry being Drake, the culture being Kendrick. You know, I look at Drake as 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 a rapper. I look at Drake as a pop star. You know, I look at Kendrick as more of a of a MC because he's talking to the people. Not and also I want to say this too. The one line, you know, you could tell Drake is very there's a disconnect with him and the culture. I would say. And that does sound a little funny and a little weird for me to say, knowing that he's been hot for the past 15 plus years. And I'm not taking that away from him. I'm definitely not. But on Family Matter, I believe it was how he said, you're rapping like you're trying to free the slaves. Like, I'm sorry, man. But if you're biracial, if you're mixed, if you're whatever shit, I don't even think logic. <laughs> I know logic gets a lot of shit. Logic definitely gets a lot of shit of him being biracial and this and that and the other. But I don't even think Logic would say a line like that, rapping like you're trying to, you know, get the slaves free or try to free the slaves. Like, I don't think even Logic would say something like that. So for someone like Drake, who, who's who been in this game for 15 plus years, who done who've done songs with with big artists pop stars rappers and stuff like that for him to say something like that it's kind of like bro like are you culturally like disconnected on like what the fuck is going on you know what i mean like to me it just doesn't make any sense but there you have it the missteps of the heart part six once again like i said drake did his thing kendrick just came out victorious that's my take on it so if you made it this far, make sure you slap that subscribe button and we got more videos coming soon. Let's fucking go. Subscribe. Thank you.